Growing up in, in Nigeria as a gay man was quite hard for me. It was very difficult. And I really struggled because um, I just, I felt I was abnormal and I wanted to be normal. And in search of normality, I had to go through exorcism, um, which basically redefined my teenage years to my early adulthood. And I became extremely, extremely suicidal that I, you know, it, it was hard for me. It was really hard. I don't think that anyone should be made to feel so unworthy of themselves to be able to do things unworthy to themselves. The first time I, um, I have a sense of acceptance of myself um, was uh, in a weird way, was when I came out on national television in Nigeria in 2004. When I got home, I just got a call from my director just saying, you know what, don't even bother coming back on set, we don't want to hear. Uh, the opportunity for me to get a job just went off like that. Less than 24 hours after coming out, I couldn't even leave my house. And I remember the first time I went out, I had to rush back because people were literally throwing stones at me. My house was broken into and just through sheer luck, I don't know why they didn't pull the trigger that night because they were going to, but they didn't. And I escaped that. I reported that to the police, but I was then later detained the next day because the police said they got information that I was using my house to camp homosexuals. And this was in reaction to when I came out. A lot of queer people suddenly find a face to homosexuality in Nigeria. And people would just find me. They would just look for me, come to my house, people that have been driven away from their homes, people that are just trying to look for a community. And they will come to my house and sometimes we'll be about 20, 30 in my little one room apartment, cooking, eating, sometimes just crying, sharing our pains. In 2014, um, I set up the BCLME Foundation with a group of friends uh, with the sole aim of accelerating social acceptance for LGBTQI plus people in Nigeria. But I think that part of my aim is also to make Nigeria a place where queer people can stay back and the people that don't want to leave home or flee like I did could find a place where they can stay back at home and find purpose. It was a bit ambitious uh, at the beginning. I didn't know that it was going to be that something that's still going to be around for 10 years now. Things can really change if we believe. But we're not just going to believe on our sofa and, um, and you know, drinking our tears. We have to believe to get on the street. We have to believe to put structures in place. We have to believe to risk it all. And it's not just about me. It's also about from Uganda to Nigeria to Ghana, to Zimbabwe, to Zambia. There are so many queer people all across the continent of Africa who are believing. And that belief is helping them, even in the face of challenges and hatred and legislations, those amazing people are doing amazing work because every day they believe that you can move the needle just a tiny little bit. And we are seeing the results, whether it is true laws that are pushing back, like we're seeing in Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana. You know, tomorrow is beautiful. Tomorrow is bright. And like they say, the sun rise in Africa. So gay rights is coming. Gay rights is really coming to Africa. I'm very optimistic about that. Mm -hmm.